the topic that I will be covering is mainly on data management and harmonization, mainly on the harmonization part. So we might do a lot of studies, clinical trials, cohorts, uh, longitudinal data analysis, or uh, surveillance systems, but the biggest problem arises once you have that data collected. Because once you have that data in your hand, you need to analyze it in a way that makes sense and get something out of all the effort, years of effort that go into collecting that piece of information. So uh, briefly, I will uh, try to cover what exactly is data harmonization, why is it necessary, uh, a very basic outline of the methods that are commonly used in data harmonization, and then some examples of harmonized data and how they have been used in public health research and uh, how important it is to have such data available because whenever we need those inputs, we can analyze harmonized data and get the answers we want. So uh, all of these are fruits, um, apple, oranges, kiwis, pear, carrots. And if we want to make a mixed fruit juice, we can mix all of them together and we are fine. We can have it. But the problem is that if you only want to have orange juice or apple juice, you will need time to sort out all of these fruits together, and that takes a lot of time. There can be different ways in which you can achieve it, and data harmonization, roughly speaking, will fall something on similar lines. And with data harmonization, the devil is always in the details. So you can have a, a column in, in whatever way you are collecting data, Excel or SQL database, and the same data set can be captured in maybe 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 different formats. And as humans, we speak different languages. And at times, it's very difficult for the exact same thing being spoken in three, five, ten different languages to be understood by people because we do not understand the other language. So if someone is speaking to me in French, I cannot make sense of the exact same thing I said two minutes ago in Hindi or English. And that's exactly the situation that computer systems have because most of the analysis now is sort of computer-based, when they are supposed to analyze data which are collected in different languages or different formats. So uh, the difference can be, so this is a representative example where I have tried to show that the same data can be collected in different ways. So these are all cogs, but we can't replace a cog which is on the top of the slide with the one in the bottom of the slide because the machine is meant to only accept the first one and not the last one. The, the, shape, the size, the format, everything is exactly the same. The, the, the structure is the same, but it won't fit because it's not meant for the exact configuration that we have in the final device. And that is exactly what happens when we have non-harmonized data. Uh, this is another alternative. We have just replaced that with colors to sort of talk about the different formats uh, that we have. Now, a very common, uh, so when I started uh, analyzing data maybe 10, 11 years ago, this was one of the most common issues I had. I had no idea of how to collect data in a harmonized way. I didn't even know of this term data harmonization. So we had a team of, uh, we were a team of seven or eight junior residents in first year of MD community medicine. And it was an open questionnaire designed over a weekend and we were supposed to do it as part of a student, ICMR student project. All of us collected this exact same piece of information which was date of first visit and date of second visit. This was for a project that was related to vaccination. So we were trying to see uh, delayed vaccination. So whether a child who is supposed to get vaccinated at six months, sorry, at six weeks, 10 weeks, and 14 weeks as per the National Immunization Program, whether the child is getting vaccinated at those time points or not, 
And if not, then what is the delay that we have in the uh, mandated time of vaccination and the actual time when the child is vaccinated? So uh, we were a group of, like I said, five, seven residents, and we collected data. And this was a paper-based data entry. So some of my, so these were the different formats in which people had collected the exact same piece of information, which was date. And to calculate the age of the child, we needed date of birth. And then uh, for to calculate the age at vaccination, we needed to subtract the date of vaccination from the date of birth. The problem was that with this, most of the time we would get an error because the formats in each of the cell in this matrix on the screen right now is something that in most cases your analysis software, whether it is Stata or SPSS or R or Excel for that matter, will not understand. And this is a very basic but a very big lesson that I learned that we collected the data uh, over five or seven weeks and we spent almost two or three weeks cleaning the data because we had to go back to our records and sort of enter them in a cleaned format. Uh, so that, that's one thing about data harmonization in terms of a single variable. Now, when we talk in terms of multiple studies, so Dr. Anand gave a very good example of in-depth network. So Indef has, like he said, three sites in India, but overall it's a very big network which has multiple sites in Sub-Saharan Africa, Africa, India. And they collect data on a lot of different factors. But again, the same thing. Let us say that one site is collecting data in a different format, the other site is collecting data in a totally different format. One site is collecting years of education, and the second site is collecting literate, illiterate. The third site is collecting uh, the level of education, which is primary, secondary, graduate, postgraduate, and higher. So the exact same piece of information, we will not be able to make sense of it until and unless we have preset algorithms in place which can combine these information together and provide us that one single variable which sort of summarizes everything, that's one. Second, if we have multiple data sets which capture the same piece of information, some, there might be some difference within each data set and how these are related to each other, but these differences can be in terms of the place where the data has been collected, the population involved, the age group, the time period, the study design, the number of variables, the format in which these variables have been collected, the file format, which is something which uh, someone who is into research will ultimately realize that file formats are also very important. Then we have naming conventions, uh, the columns, and the exact variable definition that have been used. Now, these four data sets might be on the same out outcome, but because of these differences, we can't straight away co combine them together to get a big data set. And the benefit of a big data set is something that most of us who have some background in stats will realize, which is sample size, statistical power. So the moment we combine data from multiple uh, sources, we have larger populations, we have higher st statistical power and precision, and for outcomes which are very rare, infrequent, we might have a sample size of 10,000, but that outcome occurs, uh, let's say, one in 1,500 or 2,000. So even with a very large study, we will only have five individuals with that specific outcome. So we would like to combine things from multiple such data sets so that we have some level of precision when we are estimating the outcome of interest. And that is why uh, harmonized data is such a buzzword right now because everyone is interested in having a lot of data so that models can be built, explanations can be pursued. Uh, we can do data harmonization at two steps. It can be at the level of input and at the level of output. It's much, it's a, it takes a lot of time to develop input harmonization because you have to go through long list of variables and stuff 
to figure out how you want to collect data, how you want to define the variables. But ideally, that should be the way forward. But in case we do not have data which, is, which was collected for a given purpose, then we can use uh, retrospective or output harmonization wherein we can collect data from different sources, harmonize them using standard recoding or uh, definition algorithms, and get a harmonized data set. So uh, this is an example of input harmonization of data that was sort of collected in the, the DHS program, the Demographic and Health Surveillance Systems. NFHS is a study that is uh, conducted under the DHS program. And you see that they have a long list, well-defined, and uh, not in this one, but there are places where people have, they have options wherein they have site-specific coding. So if you are collecting data in Ghana and in India or Ethiopia, the settings are very different, but the data, the data format or questionnaire is adaptable to the context in which you are collecting data. Uh, this was a very quick analysis on uh, the percentage of children stunted from 1999, which is NFHS 2, to 2020. And because the data was harmonized across all these rounds of surveys, it, it just took 15 minutes to get this estimate, which would have taken much longer if data set was not harmonized across time. Uh, we also have the HBGDKI repository that's also uh, built around data harmonization. And like I said, they have data from all across the globe, multiple rounds of surveys, multiple studies, different study design. But after harmonization, as you can see that these are very different surveys in very different contexts, but they have, all have a list of exposures that are defined in exactly the same way. And this was an example of output harmonization because the, these 190 odd data sets were collected from 1980s to 2015 across different parts of the world. Uh, a similar example on which I worked, uh, so we had 27 data sets in the KI platform and we analyzed wasting, the incidence of wasting in India for the first time. It was only because we had harmonized data or we could harmonize data across time, across surveys, and then combine them together. Uh, the in-depth network that uh, Professor Krishnan talked about, uh, again, uh, if we look at the data repository, the data structure, then this is the exact format you will get data in, no matter which in-depth survey you open, and that's the only reason we can combine things together and get uh, results which provide a lot of insight, which would not have been possible if data was not harmonized, and we were analyzing outputs or exposures or outcomes at a single site. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you.